Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be doing a species spotlight on a wonderful catfish, very rare, new to the hobby. Uh, this is known as the Tatia Galaxias, which is such a cool name uh, in my mind. But it is a wood cat or a driftwood catfish. Uh, right now, it's probably about an inch and a half or two inches long. Uh, if you see next to my finger here, uh, we'll show my pinky next to it. And we'll try to show you where the head is. The head's uh, right where that shrimp's head is. And then its tail goes back into there. We'll get a better look at it in just a moment. This fish, uh, we got another one in here. Just picked these up from Aquatic Arts. They specifically ordered in uh, catfish for me, some of these ninja cats, and uh, or wood cats, I should say. I used to have ninja cats and the orca cats, and uh, I've never had these ones. They're very interesting. Uh, I've noticed some different things right off the bat. One thing is the serrated uh, edge, which has a, a bit of a blade to it. It's it's uh, rigid on that fin. Now. All the Tatia species uh, named after uh, a famous uh, fish, uh, well, explorer of fish, I won't say marine biologist or anything, but yes, an aficionado of fish, uh, Tate was the, la was the last name uh, of the person, that this whole class of woodcats is known as Tatia or Tatia. Uh, I've had Tatia Mosaica, and then Tatia Ninja, and uh, a couple others, Honeycomb Cats, and um, the Leopard Cat. Now, this can have spots uh, that look just like stars. That's why it's called, uh, its actual Latin name is Galaxias, which is pretty out there, pretty cool. They have uh, a big mouth for their body, more so than, uh, you know, than you'd see in a Corydora or some species like that. Uh, they're kind of similar, as this guy goes by, to the Pandagaras, really, uh, in, their, in their body build and, and their color and the way they move around. Now, to get the big stuff out of the way... They uh, they like water that is anywhere from 72 degrees to about 76 degrees. They're found in the upper Amazon basin. There's its mouth. There we go. You can see his mouth a little bit here. Uh, and I'm going to pull him out so you can look at him really good in a sec here. But uh, they live in the upper Amazon basin in between Brazil, Colombia, and uh, Venezuela. And some of them have just single dots that run down their body, and others have this kind of porcupine, porcupine pattern uh, across their body um, that follows. And what I think it looks like is if some of them have just plain spots, this looks like it's going into warp drive. It looks like, you know, activating warp drive. <laughs> Uh, something along those lines, if you're a sci-fi fan, that is. Now, I want to get a good look at its mouth again. Uh, this is great, because usually they're hiding. To be honest, this is a fish nerd's catfish. Um, they're not too demanding as far as pH and things like that. That's not a huge issue, um, surprisingly. They do tend to like slightly acidic water, but they don't need crazy acidic water. My other uh, Tatia mo mosaicas needed like 6.0 water, and then they needed something along the lines of uh, 3.5 water to, to really spawn. Um, so these guys, like I said, they don't need super, any special, you know, they're not fidgety with with the water conditions other than it needs to be clean and what i mean by that is uh low nitrates uh they are fussy about that no ammonia they're fussy about that uh but other than that um you know they're a, a fairly robust fish as long as you've got a clean tank uh the other interesting thing 
about this fish is that the pattern extends all through the tail and that the tail doesn't really come out to uh, a normal, you know, flipper shape to a to a sail shape uh, or a delta tail shape. It's kind of just a continuation of the body, which is unusual for a certain catfish. Now, as for food, these guys love to eat little shrimp, little teeny snails, uh, bugs. Uh, they're, a, they're a predominantly carnivorous catfish. That being said, they're like pretty much all catfish, and they will eat a little bit of this, a little bit of that. In hard times, they'll eat algae. Uh, and then they might even eat fruit and vegetable matter uh, just for the heck of it, wood matter, grass, things like that to help with digestion. Uh, so they really do uh, best all wood cats in a planted tank. Um, or if you're not going to plant the tank heavily, you should go with a black water tank, like with a ton of tannins, lots of leaf litter, uh, lots of logs or sticks they can hide under. And that is going to keep them really happy. You don't need to feed them daily necessarily, but you do want to feed them, uh, make sure they're getting food. Uh, if they're not coming out and grabbing it, because one, I said they are nocturnal. And two, they're going to, as you see, they're going to hang out low down under things. Uh, if, if you want to see them, I suggest building a rock hide maybe in the corner or a log hide right in the front like this, and then you'll get them congregating under the shadow of that from your bright light, especially if you have a high-tech tank. It can put a lot of light on these little guys, and they don't want any, and they actually have um, a special uh, covering on their eyes that helps, they can turn it opaque uh, in the daytime, and that helps it, them uh, get sleep even if they're exposed to the light, I guess. Uh, and then at night, their eyes are very sensitive. They can open up that membrane. Uh, but it's just something to note because actually people have reported uh, in some cases seeing the membrane and thinking that they had some glaucoma or you know something like that. Now... These guys, even though they appear to be nearly dead at times, they're, they're incredibly muscular, incredibly fast when they want to be. Um, they're kind of a ambush predator. They make burrows, and then all of a sudden they'll leap out and get what they want. So they just kind of lay there like they're dead sometimes. Uh, but as they get older, they get a little more outgoing. They don't need to be in big groups of fish, which is kind of nice. They're a catfish that can live alone, um, or you can keep it in groups. If you keep it in groups, you're, you're going to want to give them hiding spots uh, to, to choose from because they, they can be a little territorial amongst their own species, even though they are completely peaceful towards anything except for small crustaceans and other fish eggs or fish fry, perhaps. But as we see here, this would not be a good scene, the baby shrimp and even the adult shrimp, because with catfish, if it fits in their mouth, it it will be in their mouth. Uh, and these guys can open their jaw extra wide, and it's as wide as their head is wide. Now, telling males from females apart, let's see if I can set this net down for a second, maybe we can get a hint of that. Oh, look, a little Busa philandra plant. Uh, so this anal fin here will be curved uh, if it's a male. So this appears to be a female, we can see that it curves just normally. Uh, it, it's a rounded hump kind of thing, and then there's fins here. On a male, you would have two rays that look like these little chainsaw barbels that they have, uh, and you would have those two of those right there that are built into the body, and uh, obviously built into the body. And then they use those to latch on to the female fish. And basically they uh, embrace one another, swim around the tank, and they drop 100 to 300 eggs in a go. 
and let them hatch as they will. They're a quick hatching eggs. They, they hatch in uh, two and a half to four days, and the little fish are left to their own device and uh, are in usually muddy and silty or sandy conditions, so they will bury themselves under uh, that substrate and literally hide with just their head and mouth sticking out and just kind of come up and go, go, go. Uh, and so that's kind of their little MO. Now, despite them hiding so much, it's very interesting to me to note that they are actually incredibly good jumpers. You saw how fast they can swim. We're going to try to grab this guy again because this is my uh, Malawa shrimp, uh, my par, Parapapar Dente uh, Caradina or Malawa shrimp grow out tank with the Sulawesian uh, algae eating shrimp. But I thought maybe they, since they're in a new home, that they would like a, a welcome home uh, present and that perhaps eating some of these shrimp would uh, perk up their spirits. But now that they've had, uh, you know, the, the evening and the afternoon to do that, I'm going to grab them and I'm going to put them in a tank with some more algae with some shrimp, but not my main uh, shrimp tank that is just completely cons like full of crazy amounts of shrimp. Watch this. If I pull things forward, I'll probably get a stampede of shrimp if, if it's like most times in this tank. Yeah, we'll get shrimp coming out of the woodwork. Uh, or the plant work, I should say. So, they can have quite a few feasts. Look, I can't even get... Uh, out of the tank without grabbing a shrimp there. So they'd be happy, but I'm not going to let them eat all of my shrimp uh, just to say welcome home. So you can see, oh man, all the shrimp are running past them right now. So they're really just still getting accustomed. They're tired and they just sleep like that. But don't let them fool you. That is, you know, from this position, they are ready to go very quickly and will dart off very quickly. So I got one here, uh, but the other is completely gone. I don't know where the other went. Can't tell. And uh, this guy or gal, let's find out which one this is. This appears. So we're looking for that last fin, the last back fin, to have a, uh, a ray that's textured on it and a bit of a chunk missing out of it. See, you can see how unhappy this catfish is at the moment. They do not like being trapped at all. Um, and they will fight very hard. Uh, oh, no. Uh, well, I thought I had it, but doing this thing while on, you know, while holding the camera may not have been the smartest choice. Uh, because that thing slipped away from me very quickly and just gone into the sunset. But overall, I think this is a great uh, a great species. I mean, no problem for you guys to take care of. If you give it a den that it establishes, which it probably will, um, then what you want to do is put food near the den at night, ideally, and it will start coming to that, and then in late at night uh you can wake up and feed it and check it out if you want um even just like with the lights off and then like an led lamp or something and you'll really see them zipping all over the tank and doing some really fun acrobatic stuff and hunting live prey if you have shrimp in there maybe you don't have shrimp in there all the time but you put some in there for them and uh they will just nail it like a bass or something really harsh so they're cool that way, but you want to get a top or give them way more space than even this. They can leap at least their body length. But as I said, don't worry about the TDS too much. They can take it or leave it. Uh, they do like clean water, though, so you don't want to let a whole lot of, uh, you know, acidic uh, plant debris or break down into ammonia and things. But the acidity of the water is fine. Uh, if it's in the six and up range for them, unlike other uh, tatia or tatia uh, species 
some like very acidic stagnant water these guys have less whiskers uh, if you notice in the front their barbels are much smaller and petite and i my guess is they don't sense as far or, or weren't evolved as pronounced uh it could also turn out surprisingly that this is not tatia galaxius because it does not have the dots it has actual uh, elongated ellipsis shapes and that could be a whole new species it's a whole debate that i just found several people speaking on but this fish was discovered in 1974 and first successfully bred uh, by the same group that actually found it and named it uh, uh, somebody with the last name meese m-e-e-s who also discovered many other uh, of the driftwood catfish in the 1970s up through the early 1990s so i hope you guys enjoyed this little rundown on this little uh fish and i hope i can find them again and put them in a tank with a few less shrimp and a little more uh hiding spots and less harsh of a light for them to uh you know feel at home in all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Take care of your fish, of your plants, of your tank in general, and all the creatures in your care and custody. And, of course, take care of the people around you because, you know, what's life if we don't have the creatures, the people, the things, uh, the living things uh, in, in nature there to support us back? But most of all, you got to take care of yourself first. So... Do whatever that means and uh, take care of yourself as well so you can do the other ones properly. All right, guys, if you like this episode, please like and subscribe if you want and you haven't yet. You can also support me through t-shirts. I'm going to do a Woodcat t-shirt through the Teespring link below. And there's also a Patreon link too if I earned it from you and you're still hanging on at this very end. That's what I've got to say about the Tatia Galaxia galaxy i don't know what else i could say about this awesome fish um but very cool patterns and uh, i hope you enjoy it i will let you guys know how it goes when i try to breed it it only took 10 uh, 15 years for the first uh set to breed <laughs> i'm sure i'll have better luck talk to you later Bye bye <laughs>